Hey everyone, um, welcome to Puzzler's Paradise. So I'm gonna basically just give you guys a bunch of puzzles. I'm mostly gonna try to stay out of the way, but now and then I might give you a few tips on how to solve it if you get stuck. Um, I'm gonna try to give you different types of puzzles. Mostly they're gonna be tactical. Some will be in the end game, but they're all gonna be tactics uh, for the most part. So uh, start with this one. So white to play. Um, I'd say when you think you have the answer, not too many of you, but raise your hand just to, for good form and make sure it's complete. Like usually it's not going to be just one move. I want like variations and want to make sure you see everything. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very nice. So yeah, the king of fate is pretty easy here, here. So does black have any defense? Okay. Not really, right? I mean, takes here is going to be pretty deadly. Uh, yeah, and then that's Well, maybe I could try a move like this, but... Yeah. Queen takes f7 is probably pretty easy. Rook takes probably works. Yeah. Basically, the key is that first of all, you have to look for all your checks, right? Tempo moves, bishop h7. Um, and also, you know, the key is to figure out what the, you know, what is holding black's position together. Once you eliminate this bishop, nothing holds the king side together. Also, white. These are all white to me. Mm -hmm. And again, try not try to let everyone else think until you have the until you think you have the answer. Okay. So this is the key. You, you want to make sure you go to the end of your variations. It's easy to kind of jump on it like ah, I got it all. But make sure you see all the moves, right? Because imagine if you were to just bang down this, and then you were like, oh, oops, my hangs hangs. Yeah, it hangs. It is. But as was pointed out, bishop g2, and there's actually no way to stop mate. So you have to sack the queen for the bishop. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but the point is that you lose your whole queen. Like, you have to take this bishop. You can throw in a check if you want, or play king f8. But basically, this is pretty easily won. Too much material. Yeah. Very nice. So, yeah, I, I call a move like bishop g2. Uh, I have a name for it. Well, it's not my name, I should say. Can but I No. Uh, it, it's uh, the stinger at the end of the tail. It looks like this variation doesn't work, but then you see bishop g2, and it changes the evaluation. Sure. I mean, not literally, but anyway. Um, so yeah, the idea is that there's the mate threat. You can't really stop it with the queen. White to play. You've seen it before? Then hand down. Then hand down. This is a bit of a tricky one because I bet you if you were to just look at this position, you'd probably think, why would there be a tactic here? It's just some end game. Sure, the knight on c4 is hanging, but so is the knight on e1. Like, why would there be a tactic? So I'd say that, especially during your games, like in end games, I find that people tend to forget that tactics exist sometimes. They just play... Hmm? So, to complete my thought there, um, what I'm saying is just that people forget that there are tactics in end games. So being on the lookout tactically is important no matter what phase of the game you're in. Um, all right, that's all I hand here. Yeah? Uh, you go c4, and then bishop takes c4 and c2. Very nice. It's easy to miss moves like this, especially during a game, because you have to be on the lookout all the time. But the idea is it's a tempo move, right? You always look at tempo moves first, hitting the bishop. The knight's hanging, you must take. And then knight c2, and now you have two pieces hanging. And there is no good solution for that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Is that the only variation? Aha. So you have to make sure that you see all the lines before you jump at it, right? 
So if after rook c8, the best you can do after rook takes is take, it's probably not the best move. Yeah? Um, if I take rook c8, then rook c8, then queen Aha. So rook c8. So at the moment, queen f8 is a pretty strong threat. Um, there's no real way to stop it apart from taking this rook, because if you take the pawn or play queen f6, you can't really stop it. So you must take, and now, queen e7. So you're hitting the, so you're threatening to take and take. As well as d8. Yeah, d is what I would say. So, what choices does black have here? Yeah? A rook. You have to be cute. You can't just promote to a queen. I understand. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would promote to a queen there. So queen f5, for example, you just promote, right? You don't take the rook. Um, and after rook g8, which I think is the best move, you promote. This time, a queen is advisable. And you can't take back the queen. You don't get checkmate, because black can move. Yep. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty crushing. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So yeah, if the bishop retreats, you can t you just crash through, and you have rook c7, you have take c6. It's just going to be painful. So we must capture queen a3. Only move bishop b5, rook takes b5. Discovering on the queen, pretty much you have to take or move away, and then the check. Yeah, this one I found a lot of people can get stumped on this one, because it doesn't look like you have anything too crushing. But if you force yourself to always look at tempo moves, and he attacks, captures, checks, etc., a4 has to be on your list, right? Because it's an attacking move, which means it deserves your attention. Yeah? Okay. What are my options? Um, take. Take the bishop. Then knight takes and queen takes. And then? Oh, it's not good. It's okay. Just make sure you calculate all your variations to the end, right? You want to make sure it works before you think you got it. But, I mean, definitely on the right track. F5 is a move you got to be looking for all the okay. time, right? This is back in Well, do you have it? Then let other people think. Yep. So, you know, h3, and then you have to put the bishop to f5, and then c5, you have the bishop twice, and if the bishop moves, you play f5, forcing the bishop to take back, and then you put the bishop to f5. Okay. Um, so, there's a problem with your line, uh, and mainly it's to do with the first move. h3 would not um, be the. You can take yes. So you have to be, like, what I would say is, one of the problems when people try to do tactics, one of the most common mistakes I see is they immediately start looking for threats and anything they can do, which of course makes sense. But you want to treat it like a regular position in a sense that you want to, in a normal position, you'd ask, does my opponent threaten anything, right? In any chess game, you would ask yourself this question. But during puzzles, people don't. I think that people should do this during puzzles also. I've certainly been guilty of not doing that, and usually it, it hurts me more than helps. So. I would say your move should address the threat of rook takes rook. Um, and it seems like a simple thing, but it's easy to miss a move like this if you're trying to just attack stuff. So I, I understand the mistake completely. So if my thing works, I can play rook d8 So you want to play rook d8, king, king g7 is forced, and then h3. So what are black's options there? So rook d8 check we're looking at, king g7, followed by h3. So your options are, what are black's options there? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's legal.
Yeah, and also keep in mind, you have to calculate moves like bishop takes h3. There might be some trick after you take yeah. something like this. Mm -hmm. Maybe your idea works, but I think white has stronger. So my advice on this one would be tempo moves, it's good, you want to cover almost all your tempo moves, but do you guys have a particular order you cover them in? Or do you just kind of pick at random, put them on a roulette wheel, go bam? Well, what's the easiest method? How do you determine which tempo moves you look at first? Put them in a chain. Put them in a chain? Yeah. That doesn't sound very nice. Anything else? Any other way? Yeah? Those are, that's what tempo moves are. I'm, a, I'm asking what order. Ah, checks, captures, and threats. I'd say that's pretty good. But I, I'll, I'll get to your move. But I, I like to be a little bit more specific. I go for most forcing first. As in, if your opponent only has one legal move on one of your options, that's probably what you should calculate first. Uh, I also go for biggest threat. So for example, if I can threaten mate in one, I'd calculate that before calculating, say, the capture of a pawn, wouldn't you? So you want to be a little bit selective, but I'd say strongest threats, most forcing moves come first. So h3, attacking a piece, is a pretty strong threat. But there's another idea which is more forcing. Yes? Okay. Immediately or after check? Well, you said yeah. I asked an, a, an or question. I said, do you want to check first or play f5 immediately? Okay. So what are my options? Okay. I would imagine so. Okay. So if, yeah, if I move my queen, do I have any good squares to move my queen? If pawn takes, do I have a fork? Like I always ask myself these questions, right? Not right, because y you can check here, but even if you black block, it's not a big deal. So okay, so I must take, and now what? Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna take the knight. Okay, so I have how many options? Queen block here, queen block here, king here, king here. Let me guess, a couple of those moves you missed. That's what I thought. Very easy to do. You know, you get excited, you're calculating your tempo moves, but you have to remember, like, you have to pause after each move. The pause is something I, I talk about in most of my lectures. If you guys come here for the next month, you're going to hear it way too often. But pausing as you calculate. Make a move, stop. Make a move, stop. Uh, yeah, because queen g5 and queen g6 are both good moves here. Uh, queen g5 probably more so because I'm attacking more squares. King f8 here? King of faith, king of faith, then you might have rook d8 check and you keep attacking, right? I can't go here because I'm mate. And if here, queen check, I assume that was your idea, right? Well, king h8, I just get mated immediately, right? But queen g5 is quite a good move, and that stops any ideas. Uh, got it this time? Are you sure? Are you going to bet me? Five dollars? All right. What, what's your solution? F5, so nice fork. Okay, I must say. Uh oh. The pause almost always means something went wrong. The pause should be taken before the move, not after, just so you know. But keep going. Doesn't work. What were you going to try? Okay, so queen here, fine. The king can take it. Yeah, this doesn't really help you out. Yep, that's another one I have to tell people a lot. People forget the king can take things. You put a piece next to the king, it's going to eat it, you know? Uh, it, it sounds simple, but it, people forget that all the time. You guys are on the right track, though. You have a real killer move here. Look for loose pieces. What's loose? Uh, bunch of pawns? Yeah, but you don't get that many points for taking a pawn. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. So, any moves that can attack the bishop? I didn't say it was hanging, I said it was loose. Yep. 
Queen f3 attacks the bishop and attacks this move. See, attacks this move. You cannot attack a move, Josh. Where to go? It threatens knight h5, but I don't know if knight h5 is a huge threat, actually. The problem, though, is I think I can go here. Seems to cover it, right? So see if you can attack the bishop in something stronger. I saw your hand first. Um, what was it? Queen c5, threatening mate, and bishop. Very nice. Threatening queen f8 mate, threatening knight takes a 5 check, winning the queen. That's a pretty powerful move. So, that's kind of, the, so again, like, you know, if you really stop, force yourself to look at all the attacking moves, usually you'll stumble on it eventually. Sometimes you see it right away, and then tactics seem really easy. But on the problems where you get a little bit stuck, make sure you're looking at all the attacking moves. And again, I, I certainly noticed that, well, this bishop looks a little funky here. Doesn't look right. And sure enough, you get to do a nice double attack. There's a check here. But I don't think it really accomplishes too much. Yeah? Um, I got your move. Yeah. Only, only the older people in the audience are allowed to do that. Kids, you're not allowed to forget anything. There's a rule. You, you remembered your move? Does it work? Because otherwise you're really leaving us in suspense. Okay, go ahead. All right. So if I if I go to yep. Okay. Oh my goodness. Free bishop. That's pretty hard to stop. Rook h3 mate. I, I find that and this is something I told you about how ta people forget about tactics in the end game. People forget you can checkmate in the end game. It's not against the rules of chess to checkmate when the queens are gone. So Sometimes playing against your opponent's king is a good idea, even in the end game. And here you can see that kind of is the key to the position. Yeah? I thought trick maybe is in the end game when the man is playing. Well, eventually, but usually you queen a pawn and. But people forget, even without queening a pawn, sometimes you can go play against the king. Aha! I decided to give you a weird position. So the problem is, first of all, you want to make sure you see things to the end, um, but also. It's hard to count all the queen checks when it's such an open board. So you want to make sure you have to be really good at visualizing. Be like, okay, where does the bishop control? Where does the rook control? Where can the queen move that's a check? Um, and you want to see what all the checks are available. Yeah? Hold on. Okay, so rook d3 is what we were looking at. So I'm going to give a check, because otherwise you have this mate threat and you're attacking the queen, and I don't think I can stop both. So I think I have to play check. This was the move that stumped us. A what? Zwitschenrug? Uh, not quite. That that means an in-between move. So like you play one move first and then play another. So yeah, keep going. Ah, uh, bishop d4, and then so now you're guarding this square, attacking the queen and threatening mates. So there's only one move that stops it. That I can see. I mean, unless you want to give up your queen. Uh, unless you want to give up your queen, that's what you want. Yeah. Correct. Ah, very pretty move. Very nice. So, forced move, bishop check, hitting the queen. That that that's just funny. You would call it that, but it's so rare there is no name for it. Corridor mate. Corridor mate. Ah, could be. I don't actually. I have to confess. I don't know the names of everything so well because I learned them when I was a kid, and then I forgot them. So I know what things are. I just don't know all the names. So I believe you when you say corridor. Corridor mate's kind of a cool name for it. This one requires you to think a little differently. You're not trying to draw. Drawing would be quite easy. If you, first of all, if you don't have anything, you're going to play rook here defending your bishop. King takes pawn, rook takes pawn. Rook and bishop against rook. Do you guys know what the result of the ending game should be? Yeah? I mean, it depends on the position, but say it's just, say, say they're just pieces are on random squares where there's no mate. Yeah. 
Now, that's what's best play. You should never, ever agree to a draw there. You should try to win with the rook and bishop. Obviously, you'll agree to a draw with the rook. But <laughs> with the rook and bishop, you should try to win. But it's not technically a win. If, if your opponent plays the best moves, they actually can draw. Um, however, so if you don't have anything here, you would play rook f3 and just play rook and bishop versus rook. But, indeed, you have a much stronger move. Yep. Okay, so you're thinking sort of in plans, and that's often a good way to think, but these positions are mostly concrete. What I mean by that is concrete. concrete. It, the same as what you said. All right. So, um, what it, and what that means is that basically everything is specific, like to the position. So it's not like you can be like, well, this is my plan, and I'm gonna kind of do this. It's very specific. It's okay. I play this move. They play this move. I play this move. They play this move. It's very tactical. So, you know, a4 trying to move your pawn is a logical move to look at, but you have to calculate it. Rook takes f1 check. King d2 or king e2. What does black play after that? And it doesn't seem like you have really a solution because if I play takes. King e2, say, and rook f4, doesn't seem like you're really doing a whole lot. So you have to make sure that you have an idea to, you know, a very specific sequence of moves. This one's pretty tricky. And it's a good thing, because actually you guys are zipping through these. I might run out. Ultra hard, I believe. But you guys breeze through the other ones. I, I mean, I don't actually think I've run out of material in any of these lectures. And you guys are close, so you guys are doing pretty well. Hmm? Oh, you want hints now? No. I, I might run out of material. You can't get hints. You guys were too good on the previous problem. Yep. I'm going to just let you guys sit here for 20 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. I'll give you a hint eventually. But not that kind of hint. That's too specific. If I can recommend a way to figure this problem out, I would say process of elimination will serve you very well here. Yeah? I'm thinking about a simplification tactic. Okay. Yeah, but then rook takes f. But then I can just take on h3 and take on a2. Yeah, but that's just a draw. You're trying to win. You know that, right? Huh? But let me ask you this: If you're in a game and you have a choice between rook and h3 and rook f3 as white, which one will you choose every time? Of course, because you want to at least have, give yourself chances to win. Rook h3 gives you almost no chances to win. Rook f3, you have pretty good chances to win. So if you have to choose between those two, you want to choose rook f3. But you're trying to find an actual win. So you got to really think outside the box. It's a little tricky. Yeah? OK, so rook takes f1. OK, so if the rook moves along the first, Say I go rook g1 or rook h1. Okay, and if king b2. You don't get to stay behind the pawn. Even if you did, I don't think you can win because I'm going to be too close. But These guys aren't giving up. Come on. Alright, I'm going to help you along a little bit. Calculate a4 again. You were missing something in your line. You could have actually won after what I played. After a4, rook takes f1, king e2, I cannot move along the first rank. Can you tell me why? You trade rooks, and then what happens? The pawn just runs. So the problem is, after king e2, I can play which move? 
rook f4, right? And my rook escapes. So you have the right idea, but not quite the right solution. You just have to tinker it a little bit. Yeah? Rook d2 here? In this position? Yeah. Okay, so rook d2, I take your bishop, I assume. Rook f4. It's alright. I'm just glad I finally challenged you guys. Thought you were just gonna rip through all of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's clever, but you, you have to remember if you don't play a forcing move, it's less likely to be correct. After if you play King D two, I'm not obligated to give you a check on F two, am I? So our problem after a4, rook f1, king e2, was that rook f4 was available. That was the problem. That's the one you got to solve. But moves along the first rank lost to rook d1, and after you trade the rooks, the a-pawn just runs. To show you what uh, we, we talked about when you, were in the when you guys were in the bathroom, just to catch you up, a4 at first looked like it might work, because here you cannot move anywhere here. Say you move here and I go here, trade off the rooks, a pawn's a goner, right? The problem is that I can play rook f4 and you don't have a win here. Let's see. Attack the a pawn, the rook's free. So the question is can you adjust your line a little bit and find a way to win? Happens to all of us. Yep. And then if rook takes f1. Uh, king e2, rook f4. Okay, rook a4. Escape. King e3 also wasn't that forcing. I could play rook e4 check. Even king c2 might draw. Oh no, king c2 does not draw. No, no. You can play rook d2 check, take the rook and a4. But you're so close. A3. Rook takes F1 check. King E2. Can't go along the first, right? If you try this, you know, E F4 takes, whatever. The problem is this pawn's just too close. You can try chasing it, but your own pawn is not going to do enough damage, and this guy's way too fast. Kings do not run faster than pawns. Not in chess, anyway. Um, so... You must play rook f4. Whenever your opponent has only one move that doesn't lose, this is, that usually means there's a, it's a line you want to look at. The question is, how do you win here? Yes? Do you have a solution or a question? So, I'm Okay. Well, this, this is correct, so... If your solution was earlier, then it would probably had a flow. Yeah? Traps. Funny position, huh? If there was no pawn, you wouldn't be able to win. I could just move my rook back. It's easy to But because there's a pawn here, this rook is actually trapped. You can check or do this, but you just trade, push this A pawn, game over. Pretty cool, huh? That's the solution. But, not so easy, right? But the key is you have to really open your mind for this one. You have to look at all the forcing lines, all, the, all of the ideas, and A3 and putting the rook on B4 is very tricky.